howdy diddly dandy there, charms to Zoe, captain of the Steers. And as you can see, I've got my sort of conspiracy thinking hat on, people. So this episode's going to get freaking weird. Yes, also behind me, you can see here, I've got the No Man's Sky's Echoes artwork. But I'm pointing at the Atlas. There's a reason why I'm pointing at the Atlas, people. I'll jump over to the Tinter web, so I'm not covering it so much. Chicka pow! There we are, people. Now, the Atlas itself seems to be crumbling. Now, hopefully, I can do some wizardry on this screen and I can show you this a little bit larger so you can see that all the debris falling off of it. Well, if that continued to fall apart, do you think it might be bare boned and then show something that looks a little bit more like the light no fire icon people inside the universe? Could it be that Light No Fire and No Man's Sky are somehow connected, people inside of the Viewerverse? Hmm, so that's a little bit of a synopsis of what today's episode's going to be about, people. Heck yes. So jumping on over to the Light No Fire announcement trailer and scrolling them down, I'm having a look at Hunger of the Pine. Now a few people have hit me up, Captain, and said, Captain Steve, take a look at the lyrics of Hunger of the Pine. So I figured, okay, I mean, all I'm hearing is, I'm a female rebel. So I can't really make out all the other words because they're very wishy-washy. So here we go. Here are those wishy-washy words. It says, sleeplessly embracing, butterflies and needles, line up and seem to join up yeah let me just let zoom in a bit so you can see it's a bit better because i'm not the best reader in the world encased in case i need it in my stomach for my heart chain mail so it's got a, a reference to some of the armor that we're seeing inside of this hunger of the pine and we do see quite a lot of freaking pine trees spread across this world sleeplessly embracing yawn years into me Plenty more tears in the sea. Now, inside the No Man's Sky, we do hear about, you know, nanites being put into the oceans and into the waters, but maybe, don't know. And you'll finally use it. Bedding with me, you would see at night. Your heart wears knight's armor. Interesting that we've got light, no fire. So maybe there is some sort of duality between night and day. Maybe there is something to do with chasing the light or have something to do with light. And we'll get onto that in a moment because there's some curious things about the HUD inside of this game. So here we go, yeah. Hunger of the Pine, sleeplessly embracing you. Realization grew on me as quickly as it takes your hand to warm the cold side of the pillow. I'm there for you and be there for me. I'll hum the song the soldiers sing. As they march outside our window, Hunger of the Pine, sleeplessly embracing, sleeplessly embracing you. Then a female's voice. I'm a female rebel. Yeah, that's that's the bit that I could make out. Well, that's the only real bit I could make out. And then there's this as well, which is French. It's French, people. What does it mean? I threw it into a translator. Boom. There you go. There it is in French. But what does it mean in Angleterian? Yes, English. Here we are. An immense hope has crossed the earth. Now, the actual trailer for, you know, Light No Fire, right at the start, mentions Earth, got umpteen billion times, and Earth is kind of linked into their whole sort of trailer synopsis. So you just look above, just below me here, you're going to see different statements of different types of Earth. So it's got there a multiplayer Earth, an Earth remains there, a procedural Earth, a fantasy Earth, an unexplored Earth. So perhaps they chose the actual lyrics for this song for a reason, because it mentions Earth in French and it's rather cryptic. So maybe there is an ARG actually taking place inside of this video footage. People inside of the Viewerverse, perhaps, perhaps there is. And I think it has got something to do with this end sort of note here, where it ends on this, which could be perceived as being some sort of torch. It almost looks like the Olympic torch sign that we see whenever we're running the Olympic flame to light the Olympics to start it. Or at least it's got that sort of vision to it. So perhaps having torchlight has got something to do with this game as well. And as you go through the trailer, there are some curious scenes. 
Now down in the bottom left hand corner down here, you do actually see some sort of time of day sort of indicator, or at least I thought it was a time of day indicator until some eagle eyed chappies out there inside of the view of us, because it was a couple of people said that when it transitions from underwater to above water, you see that yellow arc next to the sort of sun image move rather rapidly. Now, you see that? It just jumped massively. Why did it do that? Are we trying to find the source of light inside of this world? Have we got to traverse there and make our way there? Maybe that's how we narrow down to where we're supposed to be on the planet to find rhyme or reason to our existence. I don't know. I mean, that was a whole aim of No Man's Sky, wasn't it? To get to the centre of the universe. Maybe we've got to get to the centre of the planet or to the point in this planet where you're going to get answers to this planet or something. Who freaking knows people inside the view of us? But I do think there might be something to it. Hence the title, Light No Fire. Has the natural name of the game has got more than just namesake? Has it got more to do with the objective of the game? We can only but know in time when Hello Games come back with more information, but we know how cryptic they freaking are. Yeah, so who freaking knows people? Anyway, we've got all that, we've done all this. Now, I did make a video some time ago on whether I thought there might be clues inside of No Man's Sky already that might sort of allude to what the next project is that Hello Games is working on. And I, I re-watched this and it actually gave me goosebumps. I was like, oh my god, how close was I to actually predicting this stuff? Anyways, it's only a five minute video and this video so far has only been five minutes. So I'm going to slap them together to make a little bit of a ten minute sort of roustabouty video. So let me just skip the intro and I'll get you to the juicy bits. Okay, well here we are people, I'm just going to adjust the volumes, make sure that it's in the highest qualities possible for you there. Heck yeah, let's make that a bit larger on the old screen. You know what, I'm going to take me off the screen so you haven't got double inception of me. I'm just going to hit play. Here you go, enjoy! Well how do there chums, it's I, Captain Steve, and today chums I have a speculation video, but not really necessarily about No Man's Sky, but what Hello Games might be working on as their new ambitious title of Inside of the Verse people. So hopefully you guys in the Viewerverse are quite accustomed to these terminals that you sometimes find behind Atlas Pass free doors which give you a little snippet of lore called the Remembrance Lore. Yeah, and inside of this Remembrance Lore there's a few sort of odd suggestions where the sort of iteration breaches the third wall. So what I mean by that is it's actually the developer of the Atlas, the person that created the simulation, interfacing with the Atlas to tell the Atlas that they're now embarking on a new simulation and taking all the work that they knew from the Atlas and putting it into their new simulation that they're building. So I've been talking to good old Scottish Rod and he seems to think they're around the same sort of lines as myself. We were just bouncing ideas off of one another and sort of in agreement that this could be what is happening. I mean Hello Games are working on this procedural engine and No Man's Sky was their testbed of said procedural engine which they've built from the ground up. So it doesn't seem to me or to him Scottish Rod that they would abandon this sort of simulation idea or the procedural engine that they've built up so nicely drawing No Man's Sky. And even though Sean of the Murrays himself has said this is not, we're not making a sequel to No Man's Sky 2, it's something that's equally as ambitious, if not more so ambitious than No Man's Sky. I mean, this is coming from the same chap who actually told people in interviews that in No Man's Sky, when you get to the center of the universe to get all your questions answered, it's not gonna be a simple case that you get pulled back to the start and have to start all over again. He said that. And yet what happened? <laughs> so, I don't know, I don't know. So my feeling is that they've dropped subtle hints into the actual game lore to hint what their new project is. I mean, that would be freaking genius if they have. And if they haven't, it's a missed opportunity. But you know what I mean? It does make you wonder when you're reading this text below me right now, read it and, and see if you think that there might be some subtle hints there about what might be happening with Hello Games. Now I have done another video around about what my speculation might be around what the new title may look like 
Yes, because if you look up some of the artists that work at Hello Games, including Bo Lam being the main key person and individual that shares his artwork out there on ArtStation, I put a video in the top right hand corner so you can go hit that up to have a look at some of his most recent of doodles, because it almost looks like Skyrim in space. It's like a fantasy RPG based in space. So, you know, you've got swords or giant axe type wielding things and hammers, but in a spacey sort of universe and you can traverse in ships. It looks very cool. I'd imagine if they are working on something like that, it's going to be freaking mind-blowingly awesome. I mean, kind of Star Wars is kind of that way, isn't it? With Jedi Knights and they've got sort of, you know, magical skills that use the Force. But, you know, imagine a space game with magic, with that sort of level of scope. Ah, oh, that'd be freaking magical. Anyway, hit up that video that I put in the top right hand corner, if you haven't already, and then give that a watch. But yeah, I am thinking, and also when I've been speaking to others, not just Scottish Rod, but other people that I play online with, or have like little party chats with, or some of my super members, I'm sort of saying, well, it would be weird if they completely abandoned the whole procedural engine, or even the idea or premise of No Man's Sky, now that it's been built up so well. I mean, how often is it that when a company has a decent franchise that they drop it after the first iteration? It just doesn't really happen. I mean, yes, we've only had Skyrim 1, but we have had DLC packs and things added into Skyrim and it hasn't really changed. But, you know, any other sort of products out there on the actual market, they usually have a sequel or a, a prequel or something, some sort of spin-off, you know? It'd be a bit odd if Hello Games just said, right, yeah, we're done with this whole space adventure and stuff. I think the next game will probably still be an open universe. I mean, if they're saying that it's as ambition, if not more so, I mean, what can be more ambitious than a whole freaking procedurally generated universe, I ask thee? I mean, it's freaking bonkers, isn't it? Surely, surely there's nothing more ambitious than a procedurally generated universe unless you stick freaking dragons in it and magic and freaking lightsabers and make it like a Star Wars-y type Lord of the Rings spin-off. We'd only but no, we're gonna have to keep our eyes peeled on the horizon, chums. Heck yes, we are. Stephen Sean of the Murray's joked and said this was No Man's Skyrim at the Game Awards. I put the image over there of where he said that. But yeah, Professor Cynical pointed out that this in the background looks a little bit like the Nexus. And I have to agree with him. It really does. There's quite a lot of little nods inside of this sort of trailer to No Man's Sky. And I don't think it was done accidentally. I honestly think Hello Games picked these scenes and picked these images on purpose. Yes, and there are lots of little nods. It's like that cube that we just saw floating in the sky there that was flashed up. They're very reminiscent of some of the things that we see inside of No Man's Sky right now, and some of the script that we see on some of the signposts and the weird language almost feels reminiscent to what we see inside of No Man's Sky. So there's lots of little visual cues. It's like there's what looks like sack venom. When you see them riding through the desert, I'll point it out when we see it inside of this trailer. But there's sack venom inside of No Man's Sky, and those purple sort of sack venomy plants are inside of this too. So there's lots of little visual cues there. I wouldn't be surprised if this iteration is another iteration of No Man's Sky. Whether it became before or after is the question that I'm trying to answer or trying to get to. It's like this is clearly a knowledge stone slapped on this thing's face, isn't it? Already made that in my first deep dive. There's the sack venom over there, the pink plants with the spikes on. There's lots of little visual cues inside of here, people. So I'm wondering whether this simulation that we're seeing now on the screen here is perhaps what it was when the Atlas was at 100%. It's like that over there looks like a colossal archive. It really freaking does, doesn't it? So the current iteration of No Man's Sky, we know that it's got down to 16. So this might have been the perfect weld before it started to degrade, and now we're at 16 seconds remaining because Although this would be 100%, it would actually be the long distance past. As you know, right now, when it's 16 minutes remaining, we've got infinite amount of time where it feels that way as a player because we experience time different to the Atlas. But the Atlas is in panic mode. It's got 16 minutes remaining. So it does make you wonder whether this is the original iteration or inside of the No Man's Sky Remembrance lore that I played earlier, the actual devs speak to the Atlas and say, look, you know, you're dying, you're shutting down, we're going to move on, we're going to take everything we've learned from this simulation and make a brand new simulation, a more perfect world. Well, maybe this is that more perfect world or more perfect universe. Now, curiously enough, 
Sean Murray actually said, what's more ambitious than a massive great big universe? It's a planet with a universe level of detail placed upon it, which is this, which is kind of what I was speculating on all that time ago. I know I said that we're still traversing spaceships, but that's only because Bo Lam on his art station has put in some lovely spaceships that look like robotic birds and stuff, which is freaking epic. Really nice artwork, Bo Lam, but it did throw me a little bit of a spanner to my works on my speculation. But I don't think I was too far wrong, people inside the viewerverse. So speculation, there we go. Shouldn't really say those expectations, but sometimes, you know, it's quite near the mark, isn't it? Let's face it, when you go by logic and bits and bobs that you're fed inside of the verse. Anyway, people, that's all I've got for the In The Viewer Verse. Thank you very much for watching and listening to me rabbit on into a massive pile of crazy. Till next time, goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again, people.